Yeah, I was um, five and a half, six years ago uh, interested and a bit involved uh, with Orchard uh, regarding decoupled scenarios. And recently I saw um, there was some more uh, activity around it to use um, laser components in a, in a decoupled site. And um, there was a discussion. Uh, Antoine uh, already made an example in a discussion and there's a PR with a guide. So I thought at least uh, let me follow the guide. And my next step was let me make this a multi-tenant uh, application. Because that would be uh, very interesting for me. Uh, in my current situation where I maintain a line of business application that we provide to several tenants. And then I remembered also um, Sebastian saying, yeah, uh, no Blazor server in the beginning of Blazor, but I saw this is uh, this is Blazor server. And multi-tenant also, also worked uh, with, uh, with the help of Niraj that mentioned that you could use the request um, prefix, the uh, URL, uh, request URL prefix. So I took the example from the, the guide a little bit further, that's it basically, um, to take into account the request uh, prefix. And that works so far. Um, is it interesting enough to show a bit? Yes. Uh, anything is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like I'm showing a OneNote page. Is that more interesting <laughs> than a OneNote page? Okay. So can you see? Is it is it uh, readable? Yep. Very good. So um, let me see which browser. Oh yeah, I think it's this one. Let me run this app. So, just to see, this is the default tenant. Um, I created some, some tenants, um, but just let me first show you what it looked like when I followed the guide, and uh, not completely because I was playing, of course, but. Um, this does requests and the components here uh, uses the content manager to get the content item by this alias and then renders it to the screen. So this was all good. So with these tenants, I don't really have to log in. I can go to the home page. And that works also very good now. So this is different content, obviously. Then, um, well, let me show the home page of the default tenant. So this is the default tenant. And this is the first tenant. And then I have, of course, the, the, the third of uh, the second uh, tenant, actually. Just made an example. And that also works. So the trick here was, um, I didn't know that, but apparently there is this shell scope available that uh, gives you the request uh, URL prefix. Um, if it's empty, you just want to make sure you have um, a slash to begin, that is the minimum. And uh, if it's not empty, then you want to also to uh, prefix it with a slash. I did it like this. And then you just render the base. Um, the base uh, element that you then use in your, uh, in your app, your layout index. And um, that's, yeah, I think the most important thing. So I was really happy that, um, yeah, that it works. <laughs> Uh, it works. Uh, it works pretty nice, and that's that's it. I, actually, uh, this is just a begin because, of course, we want a lot more. We want um, 
authentication and we want to uh, well, uh, things uh, things for settings. We want maybe also also some rendering. Well, a lot of things that we could uh, could use from here. But this this was like the yeah the first step. Oh, very uh, modest demo. So is this uh, you create a theme where you so all your work is in a theme, or you have to change a lot of um, existing code that we have? Okay, so uh, I think it was uh, Niraj, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, wrote in the in a PR um, a guide to make a decoupled application uh, with Blazor. So from NuGet packages, so this uh, just uh, references uh, Orchard uh, CMS target. And it's a very uh, basic application, but here you actually just add the Blazor components and uh, interactive Blazor server. And that's that's basically the, the customization. And then you take, not really a module, but you take uh, a direct uh, reference to uh, a Razor class library that is actually the Blazor application. So the server itself, um, doesn't have pages or components. It runs Orchard and it runs this app in its own um, Razor class library. And what we use here, for instance, um, let's, uh, I didn't invent this, eh? this is made, I think, by Isham or by Niraj uh, or by Antoine or all three. I'm not, not sure who worked on this, but. Um, what we do, I, I made a content item service. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but what, what you get, you get an alias. Um, because it's static, you pass these things in. Um, so I'm not sure this is really good idea, but the idea here is that you use the, the handle manager to get the content item. Um, and here you um, ask for the uh, body uh, aspect of it. The string. Uh, see the results. And that is the uh, let's say your content item, and the markup you get here is the is that body uh, the body aspect, and that you just render here. So the content comes from from um, Orchard, and you render it in your component. That that's the basic example. This is like getting started, let's say. And I followed it to see if it works, and I played with it a bit. And uh, yeah, that uh, base elementing is is important if you want um, multi tenancy to work. So it's basically yeah, it's this app. And uh, the, the, the the host, let's say, the Orchard host, and and this is the Blazor app. And of course, you can that you know modularize that, use uh, libraries. For instance, I put this base uh, element in a in, a, in a, a different library. Would be useful to reuse. Where do you use the request URL prefix for that in here? Where? Yeah, where, where is that used? So the, the Blazor app uh, sits here and needs to render uh, a base element, right? Oh. So I use it already in the app. So what, where is that thing, the multi-tenant element? That sits here in its own that's, library. That's this thing here? That's this thing. OK, I could not see the, the file name. OK, so that's this thing. So when you import this component, then you have a request URL prefix that is set. That's the only thing that it does, right? I I request it from, from the shell scope. Sure, but that's the component only gets the request URL prefix. That's what it does. Yeah, it, it okay. renders it renders this. And it uh, it exposes this. Property. Oh, OK, it renders the base. Hrefs page, okay, side page. 
And what is this base thing? Oh, this I see, I see. This is an HTML tag. Yeah. Yes, HTML base tag. Yeah, Just one really thing important. to note here is that we have a, <clears throat> in your site settings, you are able to provide a base URL. So here you might want to do a check to see if the settings have a URL set, then you want to use that. Otherwise, create your, your own. Oh, makes sense. Because, because the public address might be different than the one you are serving if there is a proxy that converts thing. You need to expose the public one and not the private one. Oh, makes sense. And, and um, I thought, you know, this one, this base thing, I think we were doing it at the beginning of Orchard Call until we realized that there was something already implemented in ASP.NET, but this might not work in this case. And in ASP.NET, we are using the request dot, there is a base path, I think, and maybe that's the same thing that you could use. So maybe something to look into. Like the current request dot base path, that should have the same value. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're interested, <clears throat> you know, add a couple more modules to this, and then you know, maybe put a, you know, push it somewhere public where people can actually use it um, as a sample, or maybe publish, you know, in our uh, sample project in the Orchard Core Samples project. Maybe you know, push a sample of how to get started with. Uh, you know, like, just like you did, but with modules, not just a single module. Shouldn't the current sample for Blazor be updated to have this base tag such that it works when there is no multi-tenant and also when there is multi-tenant? I, I post, um, I already posted somewhere on the, on the form and in the PR also. Um, so it, it is public, the, the library and yeah. Um, I think I came also here to to see uh, if there is interest to, to take this further. I could, of course, we could uh, contribute. It's interesting enough. I don't see why not. Some people will be interested, even if Sebastian isn't. <laughs> I don't care about Blazor, but it doesn't mean Others don't have to care. They care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Some some people care, obviously. Yeah, you care to actually do this and then what? So I see a lot of people, people out there. That. They care. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Fine. Maybe update the current decouple with Blazor document just to mention that also to add that information if people care. Okay. Um, I will. Good. Thank you. Thank you.